Hey everyone, welcome to this uh, edition of the Cartoon Flashback. As you've been noticing, I've been getting back into this more often. And this is a very unique one, because as you can probably tell by the title, I'm going to be talking about something that came out seven years before I was born. But only recently, I've been, I, along with a lot of other people, have been taking kind of an interest in. You see, as I've mentioned before, uh, throughout, uh, the pa throughout the past couple of decades, Saturday mornings as well as weekday mornings and weekday afternoons, and even Sunday mornings, have all had a cartoon block. Sometimes the cartoon block would evolve or involve uh, some shows that related to each other in some way or had something in common. Like CBS's Action Zone had the shows like Ninja Turtles, uh, Wildcats, and Skeleton Warriors that really worked themselves into that action uh, situation. You know, you had Disney's One Saturday Morning, which was basically a weekend continuation or a weekend spinoff of the Disney Afternoon. Then, of course, you had the Disney Afternoon. Things they had, rela they had related, they aired shows that are and were property at the time of Disney. Kids WB has had this. Fox Kids has had this. Even the more recent uh, animation block on syndicated network television, Velocity, had this. You know, even the USA Network had this with the Cartoon Express. Even Sci-Fi had it with the Cartoon Theater. Even Cartoon Network, Boomerang, and so on. But there was always one thing that a lot of these may have in common. And still do to this day. Mostly if you're Boomerang. And that is the fact that during the weekends, when I grew up, a lot of the network, <coughs> a lot of the uh, big networks, mostly two that I know of, and uh, ABC and CBS, they would end their Saturday morning blocks with what they called either, with basically a one-hour block. That's right. They would end the Saturday morning blocks with a one-hour show. And basically, it was known by two names. On ABC, it was known as the Weekend Special. On CBS, it was known as CBS Story Break. And these would basically end the Saturday mornings for us. Now, sometimes the weekend specials and the story break would be moved to Sundays most at some times due to sports. And that's perfectly understandable. But still, even when they got moved to Sundays, they still had that feeling of basically closing out that Saturday for you, even though Saturday was the day before. Well, basically, this is not the first time, though, one-hour blocks have closed out Saturdays. No, they haven't. CBS, NBC, and ABC have had these very, have, have had these kind of one-hour blocks closing out Saturdays since Saturday mornings began. Well, nearly since Saturday mornings began. And probably the most notable for ABC back in the early 70s they really springboarded this one-hour closure of Saturday mornings to another level, was the one-hour block known as ABC's Saturday Superstar Movie. I think that's what it was called, the ABC Saturday Superstar Movie. And basically what this was was a one-hour block of animation, I think sometimes live action, but mostly animation, of stories that, well, let's put it this way, you wouldn't see anywhere else. Basically look at it this, let's, let's look at it this way. The ABC Saturday Superstar movie was the prelude to what we would get with the weekend special. Yeah, it's basically the prelude 
of what we'd get with the weekend special. But what was different about this, though, is the animated movies, which were basically 45-minute uh, features, or 45-minute specials, the movies would mostly sometimes be animated versions of some of the primetime shows on ABC at the time, or even on other networks. You know, you... I'll give you an example. One of the first ones they did, <coughs> and I'm looking at, looking at it here, one of the first ones they did was the Brady Kids on Mysterious Island. And it was done by Filmation and Paramount Television. The one that followed that, of course, was Yogi's Ark Lark, which was basically a prelude, a stepping, which was basically sort of a pilot, if you will, for Yogi's gang that would follow. Other movies would be Mad Mad Monsters, Nanny and the Professor, which was based on a real series, I think. Yeah, Fantasy Situation Comedy, which, yep, aired on ABC, of course. Then you had things like Willie Mays and the Say Hey Kid. And the only two part they ever had was Oliver and the Awful Dodger, which went for two weeks. It was a two-parter. It basically served, according to Wikipedia here, as an animated sequel to the story of Oliver Twist. Then you had... Then you had the adventures of Robin Hoodnick, which was a retelling of the legend of Robin Hood with a cast of animal characters broadcast one year before the release of Disney's Robin Hood. Then you had Lassie and the Spirit of Thunder Mountain, which was a pilot episode for the animated series Lassie's Rescue Rangers. You had Gidget Makes the Long Connection, a.k.a. The Odd Squad, which was a Hanna-Barbera animation thing for uh, Gidget, and I think was supposed to serve as a pilot for a Gidget animated series, maybe. You had the Banana Splits in Hocus Pocus Park, which was a live-action um, animation uh, special. You had Tabitha and Adam and the Clown Family. Tabitha and Adam, of course, the son and daughter from Bewitched. Uh, basically, uh, they're depicted as teenagers that use magical powers to save a circus intended for a pilot. Intended, it was intended, basically, this was an intended pilot for a series that never materialized. In other words, like as, as you've probably been noticing, like with Lassie, with Lassie and the Spirit of Thunder Mountain, some of these were used as possible pilots to try to get an animated version, um, an animated series based on these characters off the ground. Tabitha and Adam and the Clown Family never materialized. They only had this one special. Then you had the Red Baron. Aaron, and probably the most famous of all, then you had the Red Baron, which featured uh, the Red Baron as a hero in a world of heroic anamorphic dogs and villainous cats. Then, one of the most uh, famous, if not talked about, or well known, Daffy Duck and Porky Pig meet the Groovy Ghoulies, which was basically done by Filmation, Asian, if you will, with the licensing given to them by Warner Brothers, and did, did include that in, did include that one live action sequence that only appeared in the special. And what's ironic about this, according to several sources, or some people that commentated uh, on YouTube about the, about that uh, live action short or that live action scene uh, in the special, was at the time Goovy Ghoulies was on CBS, uh, you know, the, the Looney Tunes were on ABC, or it might have been the other way around, but both were on different networks at the time, but they all ended up under one network with this crossover. Then you had Lovecast USA, which is a mini anthology loosely based on Love America style. And then you had that Girl in Wonderland, which featured the main character from That Girl, 
imagining herself in the stories of Alice in Wonderland, Goldilocks, The Wizard of Oz, and Cinderella. <coughs> now, it did run for a second season. It did have two seasons. The next one, in the second season, in 1973, you had Lost in Space, based on the series Lost in Space, and just like uh, Adam and T Tabitha and Adam, and the clown family was meant to be a pilot for an animated version of the show, but it didn't take off. Then you had The Mini Monsters, which was an animated feature based on the monsters involving a call that's fueled by music. You had Nanny and the Professor and the Phantom of the Circus, which was basically an animated feature in which the cast of Nanny and the Professor get involved in a mystery about a traveling circus. Now, as you could tell, the following season didn't have that many episodes. It only had three. Now, according to the availability, you know, when it comes to, like, home video or home disc, Mad Mad Monsters, Willie Mays Say Hey Kid, Oliver and the Awful Dodger, and Banana Splits and Hocus Pocus Park were released on VHS, and Mad Mad Monsters and Ark Lark, and Yogi's Ark Lark, were released on DVD. <coughs> now again, what was unique about this was the fact that this ran for two seasons. The one thing that might stick out to a lot of you guys about the ABC Saturday Superstar movie was the fact that one season was longer than the other and the other was just three episodes. The reason for this at the time was basically, I think, the premise of it was wearing thin, I believe. Let me check. Okay, this is what it said. <clears throat> this is what, what it says on Wikipedia, and I quote, The ABC Saturday Superstar movie, renamed the new Saturday Superstar movie in, this, in its second season, is a series of one-hour animated TV movies, some of which also contained live action, broadcast on ABC Sat Television Network on Saturday mornings from September 7th, 1972 to November 17th, 1973. Instead, intended, oh, intended as a movie of the week for kids, this series was produced by several production companies. And here are some names. Hanna-Barbera, Filmation, and rankin Bat and mostly contained features based on popular cartoon characters and TV shows of the time, such as Yogi Bear, The Brady Bunch, Lost in Space. Some of the features served as pilots for TV shows. Now I noticed another one. Oh yeah, there was one I missed in the uh, first season. That was Popeye Meets the Man Who Hated Laughter. That's another one that... <coughs> That's a, another one that I forgot. And they did have another Nanny and the Professor in the first season as well. So, again, those are just some of the things. And as you've read right there, that's what it was intended for. And of course, obviously, the premise or the idea for it kind of wear down a little bit as we got later on into the decades. Now, again, I can't really say much about it because I wasn't born then. I was born in 1979. The year Scooby-Doo and Scrappy-Doo debuted. So, yeah. I can't really say much about the ABC Saturday, Saturday Superstar movie. But I can say that it was basically the inspiration or the foundation for what would be the ABC Weekend Special and for what CBS would have as the CBS Story Break. And these basically just like the Superstar movie. The Saturday Superstar movie. These, these uh, one hour closures to Saturday mornings would always be a one hour, maybe two part one hour, maybe would be mainly a one hour a story and sometimes they would end up being broadcast as two parts, the other part coming up the following week. And they worked great and they worked tremendous. They, would, they worked out perfectly. In fact, I can tell you, as a kid, I remember always watching Saturday mornings. Didn't matter what network I was watching, I would always tune in. Me and my sisters would always tune in to CBS or ABC, whatever was on at the time, and we would watch 
both Story Break and Weekend Special. If Weekend Special was a repeat, we tune it over to Story Break to see what they have. If Story Break was a repeat, we tune it over to Weekend Special. Basically, we'd also to just decide which was better. But again, obviously, if it wasn't for things like ABC Saturday Superstar Movie, we wouldn't have had the Weekend Specials or CBS Story Break. And this is what inspired them to be me. And this obviously was the inspiration for those uh, le those uh, uh, Saturday morning closures, if you will, uh, to be created and become reality. Now, Wikipedia does relate it to other uh, similar ones as well, like the Hanna Barbera Hanna Superstars 10 series, as well as the ABC Weekend Special like I mentioned. And Tune Tracker also has stuff on it too at web.archive.org. And they have a little bit more information. This is what uh, Tune Tracker says. They basically say that it was they basically said that the Walt Disney features made the Walt Disney features made beginning in 1954 for Disney's weekly TV series could be considered the original made-for-TV movies. But the concept officially began in 1964 with NBC TV and Universal's Project 120 series, The Killers. It was star Ronald Reagan was slated to be the first but was released in theaters first after it was deemed too violent for television. After several years of TV movies, the general, the general was made a weekly event in 1969 when ABC debuted the successful 90-minute ABC movie of the week. Now here's what T <coughs> uh, Toon Tracker has to say. In 1972, ABC attempted to duplicate the success with a weekly Saturday morning animated series entitled The ABC Saturday Superstar Movies. The hour-long series, with a budget reported to be around $3,000 per film, had wraparound animation supplied by Hannibal Bear Productions and consisted of animated movies, pilots, and specials from various production companies geared towards a juvenile audience. And again, they give you the same, uh, they basically explain the same stuff that I did. Basically, they give you the same titles as well. And, <laughs> you know, that's about it. That's about it there. So yeah, basically, that's pretty expensive for that time. $3,000 per film for one hour, for basically 45 minutes of film. That's pretty expensive. But, when you think about it, it is worth the money in the end. But, like I said, <clears throat> like I said, overall, when you take a look at the, from a historical standpoint, especially a Saturday morning historical standpoint, when you take a look back at the ABC Saturday Superstar movie, you look at it as being the one program that helped inspire and put on the map app the uh, shows that would follow later on in the later 70s, in the later part of the 70s, as well as the 80s, being the weekend special and the story break. And you know what? You know, if that is the case, I couldn't, I couldn't think of a better animation block for, it to, for, for that to be inspired from. So, that's all I can really say on the ABC Saturday Superstar movie. If you want more information, look it up at Toon Tracker, Wikipedia. Look up here on YouTube. I'm sure a lot of other people could tell you about it. But, that's all I'm going to see for this edition of the Cartoon Flashback. Let me know what you guys think down below. Comment if you like. And I am out.